Okay, we are back, and um, I wanted to um, uh, get uh, Almond's perspective on this clip that we're about to show. This happened, uh, I believe, this morning in the House Education Committee. Um, Jared Tetro, who is a uh, he works in the legislative office under the the budget. Um, the budget division, um, and he's one of the, the leaders there in, in, in setting the budgets with, with the legislative office, and he works closely with JFAC, who uh, do the appropriations. And so they were discussing the education budget when Representative Elaine Price, who sits on the House Education Committee, um, asked a very interesting question. So let's roll that clip. Madam Chair, Mr. Tartro, um <clears throat> Two questions. First is the follow up on what Representative McCann was asking. And I want to understand that that 330 million, you said it went to teachers. That's the where it was supposed to go. It went to where the legislation said it was supposed to go. Is that correct? Mr. Tatro. Madam Chair, Representative Price, the legislation just says education. JFAC, rather than put 20 million here and 20 million there and have to track where it is, JFAC put it in the largest, at the time, the largest appropriation bill. But when all said and done, there's currently seven bills. They still all get loaded into the system as public school support. So to find where that 330 is, that was what I was answering, is it's in the teacher's bill, technically. But to argue, is it in teachers, is it in operations? Once everything gets transferred, it's everywhere. There is no way to track those specific dollars on the expenditure side. <laughs> There's no way to track the money. You guys appropriated $330 million and it just went into the big bucket and, you know, whatever. Brian Allman, uh, <laughs> uh, this might be the first time you saw that clip that just happened this morning. But what we're, what we're, Elaine Price was referring to was that special session they had in 2022 where they passed a tax cut and then they passed this you know, historic investment in education, $330 million to go to K, K through 12. A lot of that was supposed to go to teacher uh, salary increases. And then this $80 million to go to the launch, you know, to start to start the launch program. And so uh, Representative Price is simply asking, hey, how'd that $30 million do? <laughs> what do you, what's your take on that? <laughs> no, you're right. That was the first time I saw that when I was watching uh, uh, Senate State Affairs this morning. Uh, it, it, it but kind of boggles the mind that whenever there's a school choice proposal where money would follow the student, whether it's a voucher or an ESA, and those are not the same thing, or even the tax credit that is now stuck, apparently, um, in the legislature, the public school defenders, I guess you could call them, always come out with the same line, that we need accountability, that we're worried that parents, if they're given access to state money to taxpayer money they're going to spend it unwisely they're going to just use it for vacations or big screen tvs that's what everybody always says they they we need accountability and of course you know homeschoolers and you know a lot of people in that community you know they don't want government looking into how they're spending anything so they don't want anything to do with it and that's where our debate ends up going but here you have the public school system taking 330 million and there's no accountability you know, they can't tell you where it went. It just, it's out there somewhere. Somebody spent it or it's sitting in some bank account somewhere, sitting in some, you know, line item. And that where is the accountability? That's, that's taxpayer money. That's, in fact, that money, you know, coming from the special session, that was money that was overtaxed. You know, they had a surplus and they were trying to decide what to do with it. Should we return it to the people? Well, they did a little bit of that with some tax refunds and tax cuts. Uh, they decided not to do anything about property tax, even though there was some good ideas. I believe it was Representative Boyle had a great idea on how to do that. You know, they didn't want to do that. They, they wanted to use it because it's very easy to be generous with other people's money. But imagine the other things they could have done with it. They could have essentially fully funded a school choice you know, program where money follows the student. That's a lot more than a lot of the proposals we've seen. Uh, they could have used it to uh, replace all the federal money. Uh, you know, the federal government gives us our own tax money back in the form of, say, school lunch assistance, and then uses that to say, well, if you're going to take our money, we're going to have to tell you how to run these programs. And that includes, you know, saying that boys can go into girls' bathrooms. It's, it's absurd. And they could have used that money to say, okay, well, don't worry, we'll pay for, you know, school lunch assistance and all the other things that the federal government pays for. But no, they just 
apparently dumped it into some fund and it was never seen again. That's not a yeah. No, it's not. And and you hit on a, a huge point right there, which is, you know, there's a bill going through the, the legislature right now that is seeking to use a maximum $40 million to provide refundable tax credits for folks who send their children to private schools or have, or have, or have education expenses outside of public school. And it's only $40 million. Yet, like you just said, they appropriated $330 million to go to K through 12 with no accountability. And they yell at us and saying, oh, are we going to spend it on <laughs> televisions and, and trips to Disney World and, and all that? So it's like it's, it's, it's absolutely absurd. This is exactly why um, people are, are just in uproar over, over what our government is doing. And, and it, it happens from the national level down to the state level. Um, okay, um, I believe um, uh, Senator Ziderveld is getting ready to join us, so we are gonna we're gonna cut cut to her here in just a minute. But Brian Allman, where can people follow you? How can we keep in touch with your fantastic work? Oh, thank you. I appreciate the the words. Uh, you can go to gemstatechronicle.com. That's where everything is. Uh, you, know, you can see uh, what I'm writing on Substack over on the left, uh, guest editorials, press releases, the bills I'm tracking, and videos like. Uh, like this one will be up there in uh, you know short order. Uh, you can subscribe at gemstate.substack.com. Follow me on Twitter at at gemstatebrian. That's where the discussion and the discourse really is. And you know, it's a pleasure to always come on and talk about these things. And hopefully we're moving the needle and convincing people of uh, you know what they need to do to hold our legislators accountable. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian, for your good work. And we will uh, check back with you again. All right.